get into to the to the real topic of the signs of the times here now. Uh, go to Second Timothy three and sixteen. We're gonna call this uh, show "That Ain't Harvey, That Ain't Irma, That's God." That's right. Because if you've been paying attention to the recent news, you've been seeing that Hurricane Harvey slammed into Houston. That's what Esau Idumi Edom called it. Mm -hmm. And then they are predicting that the uh, Hurricane Irma. Uh, Irma is coming up through the islands and, and going to slam right into Florida and maybe the East Coast, North Carolina, South Carolina, things like that. So I'm going to let you know today on Signs of the Times, that's not Harvey. That's not Irma. That's God speaking to you. And we're going to get the scriptures on that. Give me a 2 Timothy 3.16. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This whole Bible. So contrary to popular belief, no, the white man did not write this Bible. No, made, no man that was not inspired by God, no man that's not an Israelite man wrote this Bible. The Israelites and you blacks and Hispanics and Native Indians. That's right. God spoke to them and told them what to write down. Read on. And it's profitable for doctrine. To, a way to live your life. For reproof. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. And we're going to show you how God corrects by bringing massive storms. That's right. And destroying everything. We're going to show you how he, he corrects. Go to uh, Jeremiah 7 and 25. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 25. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 25. Uh -huh. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have sent, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. That's who you're listening to right now if you're watching this video. I know we just look like regular Joe Blow Negroes. But God says we prophets. That's He's right. given us the understanding of this Bible. He's inspired us to be able to understand it and then give and feed the lost sheep of the house of Israel with mm -hmm. knowledge. That's and right. that's what we're going to do with this storm. Go ahead. Daily rising up early and sending them. Go back to verse 24 now. Verse 24. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear but walked in the councils and in the imagination of their evil heart uh -huh. and went backward and not forward. You know what the evil counsel and the imagination of our mind is? Oh, this is mother nature. Oh, mother nature is angry. And we keep falling back and back and back, not understanding that's God trying to get you to repentance. So he don't have to kill you when he sends his son back the second time. So not with, be reading not with fire. water, with fire the second time. That's right. That's, That's going right. to be worse than the fire that we experience in the heavy rains and the floods. It's going to be worse than that. You're going to burn up the second time when Christ returns. So he sent us out, and this is what we're doing now. We're speaking. And you know why we got to speak and give our people this understanding? He sent us because your false prophets, your Absolutely. pastors like Joel Osteen and Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, Snakes, ain't going to give you the proper understanding of what's going on. They're just going to tell you to pray on it. Have faith. Let Mother Nature do her thing. All those smooth words that keep you in sin. Yep, exactly right. Give me the article. Give me, go to... Um, now, before the article, go to Isaiah 45, 19. Isaiah 45, 19, because he said he sent the prophets, right? Rising early, speaking, daily. The what, book, what do they do? They call you back to repentance. Read on. The book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. Uh -huh. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. God, listen, God said I ain't spoken in a secret in a dark place. How do we know he's not speaking in the secret? Because this is on the World Wide Web. How we know it's not a secret? He has, he's um, uh, put the spirit on the uh, uh, booster club in IUIC and the bishops, to, yeah. and to send the bishops and the deacons and the captains to the United Kingdom. Send them to the islands. Send them to Haiti. Send them to Africa. Send them to Africa, to the west coast, Ghana, mm -hmm. Nigeria. 
to speak the words of God. The word's not hidden at all. It's everywhere. That's right. So he ain't speaking in secret. Read on. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob. That's us, the blacks and Hispanics, native Indians. Seek ye me in vain. He's not telling you to read the Bible and listen to the words of the prophets in vain. It's for your health. It's for your benefit. That's right. So you can know the signs of the times. That's, That's right. right. Read on. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Things that are right is everything written in this Bible. Things that are right is uh, not marrying the other nations. That's right. Things that are right is not cutting off your damn eyebrows like the Egyptians. And That's then, right. And then following the Edomites after they doing it too. Those are things that are right. Go to, now Now let me go to the article. Go to the article, uh, we're on Wikipedia, and this is the article of Mother Nature. Now that picture they got there, it looks like um, uh, Dash, uh, Di yep. the, Diana. That's it. Oh, Ephesus, Diana of Ephesus. I knew that picture looked very familiar. Diana of Ephesus, and when you, and remember, white people, Di Ephesus was a Greek city. Right. It's a Greek city. It's what we were scattered to, the Ephesians. They was calling us Ephesians just like they call you African Americans now. They was calling you Ephesians when you lived in Ephesus, the Greek city. That Diana was formerly um, Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth, which came from the Africans. Uh, that was the Canaanites. Before that, it was um, Isis. Isis, right. That was the Egyptians' form of worshiping the woman. Now the white man got her today and they call her Mother Nature. They give a whole bunch of different names, still worshiping the same idol God. Scroll down, let's get some info on, on where Mother Nature came from. Because our people, I guarantee you, don't know it. I guarantee, hell, I didn't know it. That, and that's funny because. But I knew that it, it wasn't Mother Nature, I know that's God. That's funny because this is on the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. Easily accessible to everybody on the planet. Yep, as long as you got a smartphone. As long as you got a smartphone. Yep. And pretty much every phone that's out right now it's is a smartphone. a smartphone. Exactly right. All right? Read that. Let's, let's uh, inform our people on the radio show what Mother Nature is. Mother Nature, sometimes known as Mother Earth, mm -hmm. or the Earth Mother, is a common personification of nature that focuses on the life-giving and nurturing aspects of nature by embodying it in the form of the mother. So it's a, it says it's a common personification of nature, meaning that wherever you go, this is pretty much a general idea that everybody's going to say when something bad happens, it's Mother Earth. They all in common consent. She's upset. She's upset. Read on. Scroll down some. Uh, click on Western tradition, tradition history. Western tradition history. There we go. The word nature comes from the Latin word natura, meaning birth or character. In English, it, it's first recorded use in the sense of the entirety of the phenomena of the world was in 1266 A.D. When did they start using Mother Nature? 1266 A.D. A long time after, after Jesus the, had yep. died, resurrected, yep. and went back to, to the Lord. Yep. This is a new thing on the earth. Mm. New thing, but Negroes don't know where it came from. 1266 A.D. Read on. Again, this is on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, read on. Natura and the personification of Mother Nature was widely popular in the Middle Ages as a concept seated as a concept seated between the properly divine you and know what a concept means? A philosophy. Made up. Read on. Seated between the properly divine and the human, it can be traced to ancient Greece. To where? To ancient Greece. Greece. Now we all got some common sense. We know who the Greeks are. The Greeks are the same people that had the uh, the god Apollo, right? Zeus, right? Uh, right. Mars, mm -hmm. Mercury. Hades, Mercury, a uh, Hercules, Hercules. Mm -hmm. What's the one that's the uh, the sports one? The sports god Hermes. Hades. Hermes. Mm -hmm. They got all these made up. Ancient Greeks got all these made up gods. And guess what's another one? Mother Nature, another made-up God. Yep. Read on. 
Though it can be earth, traced. It can be traced to ancient Greece. Though Earth or Earth in the old English period may have been personified as a goddess. As a what? As a goddess. Mm -hmm. The Norse also had a goddess called Yord or Earth. So that's where Mother Earth originated from, the ancient Greeks. What did, what did Paul say about them ancient Greeks? Go to Colossians 2 and 8. <laughs> Colossians, Colossi. You know anything about the Bible, you know this was a Greek city. And let's see what he said about all their concepts that the Greeks made up. Read that. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Well, he says beware, lest any man. He's talking about the Caucasian man. Right. The one who used to call himself a Greek. Right. That then called himself a Roman. Now calls himself an American. Right. A Russian, European. Norwegian, a European. Beware lest they ruin you. Read on. Through philosophy. Through what? Through philosophy. Through concepts. Through theories. Read on. And vain deceit. Lies. After the tradition of men. Uh huh. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. Not after Christ. Christ didn't know nothing about no daggone mother nature. Right. When 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 that when we read in Matthew 16 said so you can tell the signs of the sky is gonna be bad weather, he wasn't talking about no damn mother nature. He was talking about God gonna do this, my right. father. So we can't be deceived by this stuff. Let's go to Nahum. Go to Nahum chapter one. And let's read verse uh, two and three. We're gonna show you that that's not Harvey. That's not Irma. That's God speaking to you. The, the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 3. Verse 2, start at 2. Verse 2. God is jealous, and the Lord revenges. When you keep saying Mother Nature did this, Mother Nature did this, Mother Nature did that, mm -hmm. you making God all the more jealous. Mm. Mm. Giving his glory, his power, what he does to a Greek goddess that, that doesn't exist. That don't even exist. Damn. We're going to get there too. Read on. God is jealous and the Lord revenges. He does what? The Lord revenges. You make him jealous, he's going to get his revenge. You, you give his power to it and his praise to another uh, false idol God, he's going to get revenge on you. He's going to send all kind of earthquakes and floods and mm. whatever else you can imagine yes. to get your mind right. And those things you can't imagine. Right. Because they couldn't imagine that Houston would be under so much water. Yeah. And we're not, and, and, and we're not uh, uh, bashing the people. Who used to, we understand you're going through tough, uh, tough, tough times and tribulation right. right now. What we're doing is what we're supposed to do as prophets. We crying out, giving you warning. That's right. So right. you, in the meantime, before the Most High shows up again, you can change your life and understand. Okay. And you make haste. Let me let me prepare. Right. Cause that ain't that ain't Irma. That ain't Harvey. That's God's God. on his way. Yeah. That's right. Read on. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Read on. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. So that's why sometimes you get a hurricane that comes through. Oh, that wasn't nothing. Mm. Oh. It missed us. Mm. Oh, it turned this way. He's very slow to anger. He's very patient with us. Read on. And will not at all, excuse me, and will not at all acquit the wicked. But when he's had enough, he's not going to turn in a different direction. No. He's not going, he's not going to make it quick. He's going to sit it right over your city and flood the thing out. That's right. Read on. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind uh -huh. and in the storm. He controls it to which direction he wants it to go. How many times have we seen the weather forecaster say this <laughs> and then it does that? Or right. say that and then it does this. Right. Or say, oh, it ain't going to rain today. You walk out, I ain't got no umbrella. Damn, it's pouring down out here. These right. meteorologists, man, you can't <laughs> trust none of them. God said, I have my way in the whirlwind and the storm. Oh, I don't want it to hit them. 
scoot a little bit this way. Mm -hmm. Hell, uh, drop a tornado right there. I want you to jump over the black neighborhood and hit Esau, I do me, eat them living, living in them good houses. Right, right up the street. Right up the street. <laughs> I want you to flood all of that thing out. Mm. God has his word. He controls that thing. Read on. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. The clouds are the dust of his feet. Go to Isaiah 29 and 6 now. Some of the scriptures, if you, you know you're an Israelite, you've been watching for us. There's a lot of some scriptures that you might have heard yep. before. Yep. But we're going to take to next. We're going to give you some stuff that you might not understand so you can better learn how to serve your God and fear him. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise. With storm and tempest. With what? With storm and tempest. With Hurricane Harvey's. Mm. With Hurricane Irma's. Mm. With Hurricane Andrews. Hurricane Sandy. That's why Hurricane Sandy's. That's why I said. That's why the title of this radio show today is That ain't Ir that ain't Harvey. That ain't Irma. That's God. He said, I'm gonna visit you. You know why? Cause you see you. I'm gonna come see you. Cause there's a lot of wickedness going on right, right here, and I'm slow to anger. But I'm pissed the hell off now. Right. Right. I'm coming. Especially when the prophets are all over the world, all over the world, spreading this truth, yep. spreading his word. And you reject and it. And you reject it. Yep. Huh? Read on in that. With storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Because what happened down in uh, Houston is that um, Chemical, factory, yeah, that chemical plant started exploding. exploding yep. Fires. Mm -hmm. it's, God, it's God doing that thing. And, and what he is going to get across. He's not hoping. He's going to get across to you. You better repent or you're going to die. Period. Period. That's the only two options we got when it comes to the Most High. It's his children, the blacks and Hispanics and Native Indians. He gave us two options. Repent or die. That's right. And, and damn it, you've been in slavery long enough. <laughs> man, man, I know you don't want to be in slavery no more. <laughs> he ain't giving you that option no more. He's nah. death on the table from here on out. Yeah. It's the last call for slavery. Last call, last call. Go to Isaiah 45. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45. And verse 5. And verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. There ain't no mother nature beside God that he sends down to the earth and go do their dirty work. Where they get that? <laughs> there ain't no other God. Ain't no God beside him. Read on. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Well, you don't know God. That's why you keep saying it's mother nature. Right. That's the devil doing it. Right. Satan. God said, you don't know me. I'm the one in that whirlwind. Bringing vengeance to my enemies. Read on. They, that they may know from the rising of the sun. From the east. And from the west. Uh -huh. That there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. You better hear the prophets crying out to you blacks and Hispanics. There ain't no other God. There ain't nobody else doing that but him. That's why you read all throughout the Bible. Fear God. Fear God. Go to Luke 12. I'm going to show you something, how, how, how important it is. You better fear God, reverence him, and understand that ain't, that ain't, that ain't no damn harp either. Mm. That's what makes God jealous too. You, something uh -oh. bad happened, oh, government doing harp. Right. Oh, the government, NASA making DARPA, uh, yeah. DARPA NASA making rain clouds. Oh, the Navy got a map they put out how they're going to restructure America and cut off people. You're making God jealous. He said, ain't no other God beside me. Right. I'm doing all of that. Oh, you better fear me. Go to Luke 12 and 4. Let's show you what Jesus the Christ said. The book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 4. Uh -huh. And I say unto you, my he's, friends. He's speaking to you Israelites. Be not afraid of them that kill the body. And that's the, part, that's the problem with us as a people. We're more afraid of the white man than we are God. Right. We'll, we'll keep the white man's laws, but when it comes to God's laws, we'll break them in a heartbeat. That's the thing. You see the white man, and you see what he does to our people, shoot them down in the streets. Mm -hmm. But apparently, it's for some reason, you don't see these storms 
come in that destroy neighborhoods, sometimes destroy whole countries, and put thousands What's of people What's that other place? It's, it's another place. It's in Nigeria. Nigeria yes. is underwater. Right. Mudslides. Guess who's Flooding. in Nigeria? Guess, who, guess who's in Nigeria? Israelites. Israelites. Our people are still on the west coast of Africa. Flooded them out too. Yeah. He says, don't be afraid of them that kill the body. Read on. And after that, have no more that they can do. Read on. But I will forewarn you of whom ye shall fear. He's, I'm telling you, I'm going to warn you whom you shall fear. Fear him. Which after he had killed. What? Him after he had killed. Had power to cast into hell. Who is that? The most high. That's God. Yeah. He destroys body, soul. Mm. Read on. Yay, I say unto you. I, hey, I'm not playing no games with you. Fear him. You better fear God. You better fear him. You, you see what Jesus, that's my, in my Bible that's written in red. Yours? Yes. Well, no, but. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, what you got, Gideon? Gideon. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got a KJV. That thing written in red. Jesus Christ warned you. He said, I, I'm a, like it, one of them heart to hearts. I'm gonna be real with you right now. Right, 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 right. Like you know, you getting into something yet? Uh, you, you can't handle. Right. I'm gonna be real with you right now. Take you straight up, brother. Take straight up. <laughs> Little buddy got hands, man. You better you don't want no parts you of that. Don't go out there, man. I'm telling you, you better just <laughs> just stay in the house, man. Little buddy got hands. Let me tell you right now. I seen you do some damage. That's Jesus Christ right there. Like I'm telling yes. you straight up. Yes. Don't fear, man. You better fear my daddy. Because he can send he, storms. You know, the, you know the um, what's it saying? Um, it says in Job, um, he's the king of terror. Mm. He's and, the king of terror. And, and throughout the scriptures, you read where it says that he is a terrible, a terrible power. Yeah, a great and terrible power. That's not somebody you really want to. Mess with, tangle you, you with, won't cross him. You, you won't do him. what he say. No. You won't reverence him. Not at all. Go to um, Deuteronomy four thirty nine. Deuteronomy four and thirty nine. You tuned in to the signs of the times. That's right. Today's radio show is called "That's Not Harvey, That's Not Irma." That's God speaking to you. We pray you hear these words and change your life if you've been affected by any of that stuff. We may be affected by um, uh, the next storm that the Most High sends, but we, ain't, we, we, we are not um, doubtful That's right, down man. here because we keep the commandments That's of right. God. The only right, thing right. we're preparing for down here is the aftermath of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's when, right. When all the stuff is going to be hard to get to, some things might be shut down. And then we're preparing for that. But we got faith in the Most High that He's going to protect us while He brings His judgment here. That's right. And we'll get to scriptures on that later. Give me a Deuteronomy 4.39. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 39. Know therefore this day and consider it in thy heart. In your mind, on this day that you watched, you clicked on this video, consider it this very day. And know in your mind. Read on. That the Lord, He is God in heaven above. Uh-huh. And upon the earth beneath. There is none else. There's what? There is none else. There is no other God beside him. Let's read on. Verse 40. And with that being said, read on. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments. You bet not fear Mother Nature. <laughs> you bet not fear a harp. Dark pole. <laughs> right. You bet not fear uh, Zeus. Uh, Hades. Mother, uh, the Earth Mother. Earth Mother, Buddha. Uh, Allah, you better not fear them. You better fear God. Because none of those gods exist. You better fear the no Most real. High. You better fear the God of Israel. The one who sends the storms. Yeah. The one who has his way with the world. That has his way. He's controlling them. It's nothing that Buddha can do for you right now. Nope. Or you uh, Negroes, there's nothing that uh, Achman Ra, whatever the hell, what's the mother... Egyptian, man, what the hell? <laughs> Ra. Ra, and nothing Ra can do for you right Denied. now. Nothing. You know how we know that? Because during that storm, what does God do to that sun? Block that down. thing Block out. Where Ra at? Where Hotep at? Where Hotep? 
When God step on the scene with his stores, stores, Rod goes in the damn closet. Show you where the TV at. <laughs> <laughs> so it is no other God, thou shalt therefore keep his statutes and his what? And his commandments, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee. That it may be well with you, even going through those storms and hurricanes. Right, right. It's going to be well with you because he'll protect you. Read on. And with thy children after thee. And your children will be protected too. Read on. And, with, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth. Or he'll kill you. Or he'll kill you in that storm. Mm -hmm. Or he'll drown you out in that hurricane. Mm -hmm. Or he'll destroy everything you have in that hurricane. Or he'll have you come up missing in that hurricane. Right. And they'll only find you maybe weeks later when everything's subsided and everything's calmed down. That's a scary thing. That's, that's scary. That's very scary. You bet. Keep the commandments that it may be well with thee. Read on. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. How long? Forever. Forever, ever. Keep his commandments. Uh, give me that next article about the water that dropped in Houston. It was an article that I had about water that dropped in Houston. There we go. Uh, it's from the Washington Post. Right? Uh, read that for me. The Washington Post. Harvey unloaded 33 trillion gallons of water in the U.S. I want you to read it again because I don't think we quite understand the number that you just spoke. Harvey unloaded 33 trillion... 33 gallons? Trillion gallons of water in the U.S. Trillion! And that's only across about four cities in one Houston, state. Houston, uh, uh, we had um, Houston, uh, Corpus Christi that Beaumont. was affected. Beaumont, those on the coast of, of Houston, then it made its way over to, um, to Louisiana. To Louisiana, some, and mm -hmm. maybe touched a little bit higher than that. But that was 33 trillion gallons of water. And guess what? That was only in. A few days. Right, right. In space of maybe three or four days. Go ahead. Three days. Go ahead. Go ahead, the, uh, one of the comments says, if we had a dollar for every gallon, we could pay off the national debt now. Mm. Probably not enough in a few years. If we had a dollar for every gallon, 33 trillion. Go to Job 36, 26 and read them. Job 36, 26 and read down real quick. We're going to show you we're going to prove something to you about that with that 33 trillion gallons of water. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. Go ahead. 36 verse? Uh, 26. 30, Job chapter 36 verse 26. Behold, God is great and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. You don't really know the God that you're dealing with because if you did, you get your life right ASAP. Right. Right. It says, we don't know him. We don't really know him like we ought to as a people. He only shows a speck of his power to Man. us here on earth. A speck, a grain of sand of his power. The wait a minute. Read on. For he maketh small the drop for he maketh small the drops of water. Water, a drop of water by itself is it won't do any damage. That's that's crazy. It won't do any damage to you at all. That's heavy. Read on. The, they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, uh -huh. which the clouds do drop and distill upon men abundantly. How? Abundantly. How? Abundantly. 33 trillion gallons of water abundantly. Wow. One raindrop won't do nothing. Right. God know that. You right. ain't going to be, oh, oh, it hit me in the face. I was about to rain. You keep going about your business. Right. You know what I'm going to do this time? <laughs> Son, angels, I'm going to drop 33 trillion gallons of water. And that's just going to be a rough estimate because you really don't know how much I'm going right. to drop. Right. And a, and a small, uh, comparatively, in a small area. Mm. Remember, he did it before all over the earth. Yep. He flooded the whole earth. Oh, oh, I'm glad you spoke of that. Um, go to Isaiah 46. I'm glad you brought that up. Remember, that was a few days, right? Yes, Isaiah 46 and 9. Start from there. The book of 40, the book of Isaiah chapter 46 and uh -huh. verse 9. 
Remember the former things of old. He said what? Remember the former things of old. Remember the former things of old? Like For, what? What does he want us to remember? That I flooded this whole damn earth the before. Old place. Mountains and all. Mountains and everything I flooded out. And I did, I dropped what Esau guesstimates. I dropped 33 trillion gallons of water in a few days. You best believe I'm God because I flooded this whole thing once before. Right. You better remember the days of old. I'm still letting you know I'm here. I'm the one that killed everybody in the uh, beginning. And I'm going to drop just 33 trillion gallons of water on you this time to let you know I'm still here. I ain't going to wipe everybody out. You should be reading your Bible. Out. I ain't going to wipe everybody out this time because I, I made an oath. Uh, yep. That I, I wouldn't. Yep. A covenant that I wouldn't that do it. Water. But I'm just letting you know I still got it. That's, and what and you know, that's, that's funny you said that because you made a covenant in the beginning that he wouldn't flood the earth again. Or he wouldn't destroy the earth again with water. Yeah. But he'd do it with fire. And over and over and over, we keep seeing in the news how nation upon nation are acquiring nuclear weapons. Some are now saying, even the U.S. have now said, uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Can, they've increased the, the, the weight. South Korea. Right. They, they, they allowed South Korea to make bigger, nuclear, bigger bombs. nuclear bombs. That's how you know America rules the whole world. That's how you know that every nation is uh, subject to them. And that's also how you know that the Most High is using them to, to bring everything to a head, yep. to bring our salvation to a close. Yep, that's what it says in uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, that Esau is the end of, of the, the world. world. The white man is the end of the world that you know of. And the Israelites' kingdom that will last forever is the beginning of it that followeth. Why would you tempt a God that puts the destruction into the mind of the people who are going to do the destroying, to make the weapons to destroy the earth. That's Why would you tempt him? Why? Why would you tempt that, that guy? <laughs> Read verse 9 again. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none he else. He keeps on reminding us, because he know how, I, I'm going to put it nice, um, light-minded our people are. Mm -hmm. So he keeps putting it in the Bible over and over again. You better remember. That's not nobody else. That's me. I'm doing this. You better repent that you may be well and your children because I kill your kids too. I'll say it for you. You crazy as hell. <laughs> you are crazy as hell. Read on in that Isaiah 46 and that. There is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Is what? There is none like me. Let's show you how much it ain't none like him. Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 6 and we're going to read verse 5. Genesis 6 and 5. Let's see why he flooded the earth and destroyed everybody the first time. And let's see why he keeps flooding the earth this time, in this day and age. Because he's a living God. Read on. The book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. The same way it is today. The wickedness of men and women in this earth is great today. Mm -hmm. It's all manner of abominations. Hell, one of them is the squeakly eyebrows and squeakly lips. <laughs> Another one is you got Israelite women bringing in Edomite babies to this earth. Mm -hmm. The man, the what does that thing say? It says the wickedness of man is great in the earth. Read on. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Unless you an Israelite and you in this Bible studying precept upon precept on the daily, mm -hmm. your thoughts will become wicked because the people that rule over you, God said that they are the wicked of the Bible. That's right. All they bring is wickedness. All they know is evil. So thus, thus, you get fed all your information from them. Your thoughts become evil continually also. Right. Your thoughts become their thoughts. Exactly right. Read on. That's right. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. He said, damn, why do I make these people? Why? Go ahead. Mm. And it grieved him at his heart. You know how bad it got to be with a God that already knows the beginning from the end? That when you got to the point of he had you on the earth, they're like, damn, they're doing worse than I could imagine they would have done. I 
like, wow, they going above and beyond with the wickedness. Yeah. I got to kill him and start over again. And that's what he did. And that's what he did. <laughs> Read on. We're going to find out. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man from whom I have created from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Read on. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Jump down to verse 11. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> It, it grieved God so much that not only did he kill man, because he could have stopped there. Yeah, yeah. He killed the beast, the insects. And they didn't do nothing wrong. And they didn't do anything wrong. Man. Fatality. That means, you know what that means? That means that that man upon the earth, when he before he flooded it, they was doing evil with them damn animals. Oh, the same man. way they do evil with them now. Marrying they damn dogs. dolphins. Dogs. Horses. And the horses. Goodness. He had to get rid of the animals too. Damn. They had the damn animals confused, thinking evil continually. <laughs> Finish him. And they run off instincts. Right. Right. Damn. Wow. That's bad. Jump down to verse Fatality. 11. Fatality. Verse 11. The earth, excuse me, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 11. The earth was also corrupt before God, mm -hmm. and the earth was filled with violence. Real. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Read on. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And it's still filled with violence. Read on. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. With what? With the earth. Jump over to 7 and verse uh, 11. Genesis chapter 7 verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life and in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. You know what that is? The fountains of the great deep? He made earthquakes in the ocean. Mm. He made earthquakes in the ocean. Tsunamis came upon the earth. And washed everything away. And what else did he do? And the windows of heaven were opened. Now blessings came down out of them windows. And the windows of heaven were opened. And what happened? And the rain. And what came out of the windows? And the rain. Rain came out the windows. Not your bills being paid. Hands go up. Blessings come down from the windows of heaven. No, no, no. Rain came out the windows of heaven. And it did what? And upon the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. And it flooded everything. In a few days, he dropped 33 trillion gallons of water. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights on the earth. Now, not to mention, like you said, the tsunamis from the, the fountains being broken up in the earth. There is no God like him. None whatsoever. Her Hurricane Harvey and Irma and Andrew and all, you know what it does? It proves that the Bible is a true book. All that water that we seen drop in Houston, now you can understand how God could flood the earth in 40 days of continuous heavy rain. Prior to that, the earth, it didn't rain in the earth. No, it didn't rain at all. Prior to that, the way the earth was was watered was just through dew. Yeah, it's like the mist, that, that night dew yep. that falls on the ground. Yeah, so you can only imagine what people were thinking when that first raindrop hit him in the forehead. What the hell is that? The mosquito bit me? No. And then another one. And then another one. A few small drops, one nobody worried. Right. That's exactly what's happening right now with these hurricanes. Yep. That's exactly what's happening. A little bit here, a little drip there. Although it's massive destruction from what we, from our end, what we see, but that's just a little raindrop. That's just a little bit here, a little bit there. Yep. Because when the actual destruction comes, when Christ comes back, it's not going to be like anything anybody's ever seen in their life. Christ is going to be weeping and gnashing of, of teeth. teeth. He, you're going to be so afraid, you're going to be gnawing down your teeth. Gnawing down your teeth. Mm. Go to uh, Psalm 9 and 16. 
Psalms 9 and 16. We pray that you are being edified here on the signs of the times and that uh, you've been affected by those storms or, or, or been by one before. You get the understanding of what's happening and where they're coming from. And if you ain't living your life according to thus saith the Lord, keeping the commandments of God, if you're a man or a woman or your children ain't, You'll, you'll see this video and then say, I got to get my life right. And, and if you've been through it and maybe have suffered some of that, some of the damage, whether your house being flooded out or you seeing family members dying, whether it be Harvey, Katrina, yeah. or whatever storm, and you are watching this show, you're hearing the scriptures come out, and you, you see it in your head playing over again. Yeah. You need to take heed to these take things heed. that are coming out of the scriptures. Now, now you get an understanding of, of why. Of why. Because at first you was confused. Like, I don't know, you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Why? Why, when this stuff happened, we the last people to get saved? Right. Why they pass over why, us? Why do the white people in the boats? Because we ain't got no boats. They pass right by us. And we gotta wait on the second and third trip to go and where we almost down there drowned mm -hmm. before somebody came and got us. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting some understanding. God trying to wake you up. You better repent. You got to repent and keep my commandments. Go to uh, Psalms 9 and 16. The book of Psalms chapter 9 and verse 16. Uh -huh. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. How does God make himself known? By the judgment which he executed. When he drops 33 trillion gallons of water in three to four days on a whole city and damn near floods out the whole city and, and all the other cities mm. uh, but, uh, surround you don't, you don't, you better have some understanding that ain't Mother Nature, that's God. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. That's God. No, no, sweetie, no, that, that, ain't, that ain't Satan doing that. That is not no Buddha, that ain't Allah. That's the God of Israel. That's right. That is your God. That's your God. And you better fear him. He, he allowed us to survive and make it through this one. So whatever we got wrong with us, we can tighten it up. Get, get to the prophets. Get That's to right. the school and find out how we can make our lives more better in the eyes of God and please him. Because only God can do that. Yeah, we, we pray that you take heed. Pray that you take heed. Because these things are not going to, it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. No, he's going to keep on doing it until his people the 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 one third That's right. repents. That's right. And I pray it's sooner than later, so we you, you don't Go have down. to keep going right. through this stuff. Right. But until we get the picture, it's gonna keep until we humble ourselves, right. he's gonna send them. And it's gonna get worse and worse and worse. worse. Right. Exactly. When all hell's breaking, we got enough going on in this world uh, on, uh, overseas, uh, possible World War III going right, to happen. Right. You got turmoil going down here. You got white nationalists marching on uh, Virginia uh, campus, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, and things of that nature. Uh, still, black on black violence. That black hasn't stopped. Violence. Hispanic on Hispanic violence. That hasn't stopped. No. Uh, uh, wildfires in um, Los Angeles. Throughout the um, throughout the st the uh, the country of America. And that's just here. Mm hmm. He's trying to let you know, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. That's me doing it. Go to um, Job 37. Job 37. Yeah. And uh, let's read verse 1, 1 through 6. Let's read kind of quick on this. The book of Job chapter 36, 37 in verse 1. At this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of its place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice. Here's now I'm going to show you. Remember, the title of this show is called, That's Not Harvey, That's Not Irma, That's, that's God. God Speaking to You. That's right. Let's see what the Bible says about these storms and God speaking. Read that again, verse 1. Chap uh, Job chapter 37, verse 1. At this also my heart trembleth, and is moved out of his place. Uh -huh. Hear attentively the noise of his voice. And the sound that goeth out of his mouth, uh -huh. he directed it under the whole heaven. He says he directs, he directs it, right? His voice under the whole heaven. Read on. And his lightning unto the ends of the earth. Read. After it a voice roareth. After what? After it a voice roareth. Read on. He thundereth 
with the voice of his excellency. He does what? He thundereth with the voice of his excellency. He thundereth with the voice of his excellency. Mm. When you hear that, that's God speaking. But we are so detached spiritually from God, we don't know what the hell. It's just thunder. What are you talking about? It's just thunder, because after the thunder comes, what comes? Lightning. And then what comes? The storm. The rain. The rain, yep. Mm. Hmm. Keep reading. And he will not stay them when his voice is heard. Uh-huh, next voice. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. He does what? God thundereth marvelously with his voice. You will learn some things today that the God that you deal with, there is none else like me. That's right. That's right. Read verse 5 again because I want this to sink into the brains of us blacks and Hispanics and native Indians whom the Israelites, who God calls the Israelites. Read verse 5 again. Job chapter 37 and verse 5. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Uh -huh. Great things doth he, which we cannot comprehend. He thunders with his voice and we cannot comprehend the words mm. that are behind the voice of the thunder. You do not understand the words that are coming out of his mouth. <laughs> you don't understand it. Read on. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, uh -huh. to the, and to the great rain of his strength. And to the great rain. So when we see hurricanes coming and tropical storms and heavy winds, that's God speaking. Go there. Hit there. Go here. Hit there. Hit here. Mm-hmm. He's directing the rain to go where he wants to. When you hear the thunder, that's him speaking. Wow. Jump up to verse 13. Verse 13. He causes it to come, whether for correction. Oh, he's causing the great rain to come for what reasons? Whether for correction uh -huh. or for his land or for mercy. And it's your job to figure out which, which reason the rain is coming. That's, that's, that's heavy. Is he coming to get me in line? Is he coming to correct me? Is he coming just to water the earth because it rains all the time and the grass can't grow without rain? Mm. Or is he sending rain for his mercy where I can have, maybe I'm in the desert, I need something to drink, he calls it to rain. Is it for his mercy? It's hot out here, so let me hit him with a shower of rain to cool him off. Right now, when you see Harvey and Irma and Andrew coming, that's correction. That's right. That's right. That's correction God is sending. <laughs> Keep playing with Go it. Go to 40 and 9. Job 40 and 9. The book of Job chapter 40 verse 9. Uh-huh. Has thou an arm like God? You got strength like God? Can you can can Esau really be making up NASA making up clouds and causing earthquakes in Haiti with heart? Do they got an arm like God? Hell no. Hell no, they don't. They just want you to worship them more than God to make you believe it ain't a God. Exactly. Or that, more importantly, yeah, to yeah. them, that they that are they God. they are God. That's what they want you to make, uh, want you to think. Read on. Has thou an arm like God, or can thou call, excuse me, or can thou thunder with a voice like him? Can we do what? Or can thou thunder with a voice like him? Go to Psalms 29 and 1. Psalms 29 and 1. God speaking to you if you've been afflicted by the hurricanes in any hurricane season, whatever year it might have been. If you're black, you Hispanic and Native Indian, that was God talking to you. Correct yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. I'm not right. playing. I spared your life this time. You better keep my commandments. Read it. Psalms 29 and let's start at verse uh, 1. Psalms chapter 29 verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Didn't we read earlier in Nahum where it said God is a jealous God? Right. You keep call, talking about Mother Earth and Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane whatever. That's Hurricane God speaking. That's Hurricane God speaking. 
It said, you better give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Read on. Do unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Uh -huh. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. It's where? It's upon the waters. It's upon. It's in the waters. Right now, over the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, on his way here. On his way. And yes. last week it was at, at, at over at the Harvey. Gulf of Mexico. Over the Gulf of Mexico. Yep. Over they Texas. Called, they called it Harvey. Mm -hmm. Read on. The glo the God of glory thundering. Uh huh. The Lord is upon many waters. Read on. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The what? The voice of the Lord is powerful. Enough to drop 33 trillion gallons of water in a few days. And that was just a taste of his power. That's right. Read on. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Now, let's see here. Jump to verse 10. Verse 10. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. The God is doing what? The Lord sitteth upon the flood. We, oh, oh, don't go past that. Where did just flood at? In Houston. In Houston. God was sitting there looking at his people. Which one of y'all out here is going to repent? Mm. Which one of y'all going to realize that your, your enemy don't care nothing about you? They'll interview you on CNN while you're here shivering like the black woman was. Shivering with your kids Little in your kids. hands. And she wants to get a damn, um, what you call it? Sound bite right, for sound CNN. Bite, right. Which one of y'all gonna realize that these people are not your friends? They passing you up in boats. Huh? Which which one? I'm sitting here on the flood. I'm watching everything. I, I see you distressed. But uh, you said it's mother nature. Oh, okay. They didn't learn. I'll be back next year. Next week. I'll be back next week. <laughs> I'll be back again. It's not over. Read it again. The, the book of Psalms, chapter 29, verse 10. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. Go to Psalm 77, 18. Psalm 77 and 18. The book of Psalms, chapter 77 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. Hold on, God was speaking where? The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. Uh huh. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. When it thunders and it's real loud, what does what happens when you're in your house? It shakes. You be outside on the on the street. You be like, oh, it it loud. Loud. You be like, man, that was right over the house, wasn't right, it? Right. Man, that thunder was thousands of miles away in the in the sky, in, in the, the sky. heavens. And it shook the earth. And it shook the earth. The voice of the Lord in the thunder. You know that's funny? Because there's sometimes when it it the light, you'll see lightning, mm -hmm. but you won't hear the thunder. You'll see it. You'll see it running across the sky, but yeah. you won't hear it. It will, or it'll be really faint. Yep. And then there's sometimes you won't see lightning. Nah. But you'll feel the loud thunder. Oh. Boom! Shaking everything. This Bible's a true book. Go to Psalms 18, 13. Psalms 18 and 13. Once again, you tuned in to the signs of the times. I'm your host, Officer Zakar, to my left. Soldier Judah, and we're giving you the understanding of what's going on right now in this Hurricane Harvey and Irma and Andrews and all the ones before. That ain't them. That ain't them. That's God That's speaking. God. Psalms 18, 13. The book of Psalms, chapter 18 and verse 13. The Lord also thundereth in the heavens, uh -huh. and the highest gave his voice. When, he, when you hear thunder, David's telling you, the highest is giving what? His voice. That's God speaking. Read on. His, excuse me, hailstones. And, and, and sometimes after he speaks, what comes? Hailstones. And what else? And coals of fire. And he causes fire upon the earth. There was one video I seen, um, it was on Facebook, it was like, scroll past the time, big old golf balls of hail. Yes, yes. You saw it? Destroying cars, and killing it. livestock. Yeah. Yeah. Big old balls of, of hail came out. The thunder came and then hailstones came and, and wiped them and everything that off where it was. That has got to be something scary to hold. Especially you sitting in your car and they're and baseball size busting, out the busting through your window yeah. of your car. That's heavy, man. Whew. Go to uh, First Samuel. Go to 2 no, Samuel 22. 
We almost finished here. Second Samuel chapter 22, and we want to read uh, verse 14. Get some more understanding on the voice of God. Second Samuel, that's, you know how much power that is? Mm. He, can, he can speak to you in a number of different ways. Right, right. He used to speak to us directly through the prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, he, 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 then he spoke to us when he sent his son. And now he speaks to us through the Bible now. Mm -hmm. And he also speaks to us through, through, the, thunder. The, through the thunder. Hey man, that's power, man. That's why Christ said, Fear him. Fear him. <laughs> I'm going to tell you straight up. Fear <laughs> him. You read that, 2 Samuel 22, 14. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22 and verse 14. Uh -huh. The Lord thundereth from heaven. He does what? The Lord thundereth from heaven. Uh -huh. the mo and the most high uttereth his voice. When you hear that thunder, that's God. Oh, you see all these scriptures? Precept upon precept. Now, either you can deny and say, oh. You're just cherry picking. You cherry picking. That is your own <laughs> interpretation. That ain't what it means. We just pulled 10 scriptures talking about God speaking through the thunder. It That's was the, right. If it wasn't the first, it was the second scripture we pulled in 2 Timothy. It says all scripture there you go. is given by the inspiration of God. I think this is going to hit it on the head, though. Give me Jeremiah 51. Yes, sir. This should hit it on the head. Maybe we got some naysayers on there that still believe Esau got more power to God than right. God and making harp and NASA creating their own rain clouds and things. That's, sure. that's funny you said that they, they had on uh, Facebook where they had a machine, they had some kind of machine that was causing rain clouds to go in the sky and then caused the rain mm -hmm. to start falling. Yeah. So it, it's same again, the so-called white man tricking you brothers and sisters yep. into believing that he is God. Yep. Exactly right. Read that Let's long. read this. Jeremiah 51, 15. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 15. He hath made the earth by his power. Uh -huh. He hath established the world by his wisdom. Mm -hmm. And he and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice. When he does what? When he uttereth his voice. When he speaks. There is a multitude of waters in the heavens. Stop. I ain't the smartest man in the world. But I got some damn comprehension. Right. I know one plus one equals two. I know that I, I know that when the sun's out, <laughs> it means it's bright outside. Uh, it's light. It's light. And hot if you live in Florida. Yeah, yeah. I know when the Bible says, when he utters his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens. That ain't Harvey. That ain't Irma. That ain't Darpa. That's God speaking to you. I want you to read it again. Maybe it went over some people here. Maybe they don't believe this in the Bible. Maybe they believe the Bible is written by a white man. Let's see. Read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 15. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And the white man told you it was Harvey. Mm. The white man told you it was Andrew. Or a machine. Or a machine. He told you it was Sandy. He told you it was Wilma. But there was God pouring down 33 trillion gallons of water in a few days. Read on. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. Uh -huh. He maketh lightnings with rain. He, he maketh lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. And now, 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 now. Oh, that's the Torah. That's the Tanakh y'all reading out of. <laughs> we ain't supposed to be reading that. Well, let's see. May, well, maybe, let's go. Let's go, to, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's do it. Let's go to John. And uh, chapter Wait, 12. The gospel? Yeah, we're going to go there. All, all throughout the Bible. Now, if you didn't believe anything that we might have said before then, right? Let's see what Jesus the Christ says about the voice of God. 
the book of John, St. John, chapter 12, verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. So we know Jesus is speaking to the heavenly Father, mm -hmm. the Most High. Read on. Then came there a voice from heaven. Then came a voice, so God answered him, right? Read. Saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Uh-huh. The people, therefore, that stood by. Now, the other, everybody that's, Christ understood it. And then it was people standing by. Read on. That stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. They said what? Said that it thundered. Hold on. I would drop the mic, but it's in a clip thing right here. <laughs> That's it. Show's over. Let's go. No, we got to finish it out. <laughs> we got to finish it out. Okay. okay. We got to give our people the understanding. Christ understood it, but the people around him said, it thunder. It sounded like thunder. Read on. Others said, an angel spake to him. Uh-huh. Jesus answered and said. Now, Jesus is going to respond to the people that said it was thunder. Read. This voice came not because of me. This what? This voice came not because of me. I thought it was thunder. <laughs> Jesus given us an uh, understanding that it was what? This voice. It was the voice of God speaking. You sure you just want to end on that? This fatality. And with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to give up because it's a flip side to That's this. That's right. That's right. Because our people are in turmoil right now. Our people are, are, are going through tribulation and they don't understand what's going on. They don't understand the God of Israel. They don't understand their God. And we have been given the inspiration of God to understand the word of God. And it's our job to cry out to the people because he sent us to them. And we're crying out through a video right now on the World Wide Web. That's right. Fatality. I want you to read it again from the top. Read it again from the top. Verse John 28. John chapter 12, verse 28. John chapter 12, verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have glor both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, and angels spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Jesus Christ is confirming that God speaks through the thunder that we hear. The problem is now we are so far detached spiritually from God, we don't understand the voice. But you know what we do understand? The signs. We understand the signs that happen after the voice thundereth in the heavens. That rain that was sent to Harvey, the hurricanes that hit us all over the earth, mm -hmm. the tornadoes that may hit you in Oklahoma, the strong winds off the, uh, the west coast of uh, Los uh, California. We understand that's God speaking to us Israelites. And guess what? Other people are getting, look, he brings it for correction. For us to get our life right, and at the same time, he's destroying his enemies, the other nations, while he brings it. That's right. That's right. Bringing them low. That's so right. Let, let, let's get them other scriptures that we can give up. That is, 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 Confident. is some comfort to knowing that now. And it's, you can repent. Let's get that first one that we got on, on the list over there. Uh, Psalms chapter 34 and verse 7. Because we, we'll go, we may go through this. You may have been affected by it. You might be affected by it in the future. But here is the hope and the patience of the saints. That's right. Psalms 34 and verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. So to fear God means to keep his commandments. That don't give his glory to Mother Earth. Mother Earth and whatever technology the white man you think is creating that's creating this stuff on, on the earth. Right. God will send the angel around you to protect you through that thing because you fear him. You and keep his commands. Go ahead. And delivereth them. And he delivers us. Next verse. 
Uh, Psalms chapter, oh, next verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Huh? Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed is the man or the woman that trusts in the Lord. Give me the next scripture. Psalms chapter 4, verse 8. Uh-huh. Book of Psalms, chapter 4 and verse 8. So if you have been affected by it or going, went through it or if you've been caught up in the Hurricane Harvey, what the white man calls it, but we know that's God now, you may have been affected by it. Going through tribulation, house gone, may have lost a loved one. There is hope. There is hope on the other side. Read that. Psalms chapter 4, verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, uh -huh. for thou, Lord, only maketh me dwell in safety. That's so when you understand that, you keep the commandments of God, you can lay down in peace, knowing mm -hmm. that the Lord is watching over you, even in your worst times. <laughs> what he's doing is building up your faith going through this thing, that you can trust in him more and more and more. Give me the next scripture. Can, can I touch on one scripture yeah, yeah, real quick? Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Okay, I'll read it. Because you just you just said something very important. That it's supposed these things, we read through the scriptures, we see the things happening to us. It's supposed to build up our faith mm -hmm. so that we can continue pushing to keep these commandments, right? And faith in Christ. Right. Read Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Uh-huh. Confirming the souls of the disciples. Confirming the souls of the disciples of Christ. Those who are disciplined in keeping God's commandments. Right. Confirming them, read. And exhorting them. And lifting them up. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to show you, although you may have gone through the worst, because for some people, this is the first time they may have ever yeah, gone yeah. through a hurricane. Yeah, me, myself. I've never been through one. So if... if uh, if the next storm comes through mm -hmm. here in South Florida, it'll be my first time experiencing this. So I, I'm confirming my soul by reading these scriptures. Exactly. So when it does come. So building up, brothers like yourself, sisters who are going through it, and maybe have lost their homes, lost everything, right? That what? Can, uh, exhorting them to continue in the faith. To continue trusting in the Most High. Because that's where your safety and that's where peace is. Right, right. Read on. And that we must, through much tribulation, uh -huh. enter into the kingdom of God. So these are the things that we must go through in order for us to see the kingdom of heaven. Yep. We must That's go right. through these things. No but, way around it. But he gives us a way to escape. Exactly right. He gives us a way out. Uh, Psalms, I'm sorry, Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. That's our next one. Yeah, he gives us a way. How does he give us a way? He gives you around other believers. That's right. They're going to gather together like the scriptures say. They're mm -hmm. going to look out for one another. You just like scriptures. just like Captain Yadon and Officer Baruch and right. uh, Naom and all the other officers down there in Lemuel well, down there yeah. in Texas. They gather together. Mm -hmm. Especially those in Houston uh, and um, um, uh, Officer, yeah, yeah. Officer Naraya Judah. Right. right. They gather together. They looked out for one another. All praises. They took care of one another and, and all praise. We only had a few that was places were destroyed mm -hmm. in the Hurricane Harvey storm, but nobody was uh, lost their life. All we praise gathered to together because he gave us a way to escape, he gave us other believers, family to be around. That took us in. All Isaiah praises. 41 and 10. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. So although you go through that, God's with us when you begin to keep them commandments. That's right. right. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Mm -hmm. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's why David said that, that we dwell in his safety. Mm. His peace. We don't have to have to, like I said, we preparing for the aftermath of what's going on around us. We're not where the storm's coming. We know that's the Lord coming to right. visit the earth. That's it. We just preparing for the aftermath of when he passes correction for our brothers and sisters out there. He's trying to wake up. Let's go to the next verse. The book of Psalms, chapter 91. The book of Psalms, chapter 91 and verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where is the secret place of the Lord? It's found in the Bible. But you know why this is the secret place? Because your false pastors don't understand this. <laughs> Not everybody understands the Bible. Right. They, didn't, they don't know that God speaking through the storm, so they say it's Mother Nature. Right. 
They don't understand the secret place is this Bible. And it's being the secret is being revealed to you Israelites now that you're watching it. That's right. That's right. Now you know where these storms come from, why they come, who that's talking to you during the storm. Read on. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Read on. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. What is the truth? It is the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. That's right. That's your shield. That's your protection during storms and tropical storms and hurricanes. That's right. When that stuff starts coming past your way, the, the spirit, the, the Lord, when he's coming through, speaking with the winds and things, oh, that's a commandment keeper. Let me go somewhere else. The same way that the Spirit of the Lord, when we was in Egypt, the death angel came through. Mm. Oh, I see the blood. That's Israelite. Let me go around them and pass. Let me pass over them. The same way it is today. But you have to be keeping the truth of God, the law, statutes. Psalms 119, 142. Real quick, get the precept form. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Uh-huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So back in Psalms 91, it says his truth, his laws shall be thy shield. With a shield, you protect yourself. Mm. That's your protection and your buckler. Give me the next one. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Hebrews 2 and 1. The last few scriptures here. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. I hope you was edified. Like once again, this is the signs of the times. I'm your host, Officer Zakar, to my left here. Soldier Judah. And we have come here today to show you that ain't Harvey, that ain't Irma. That's God speaking to you. That's right. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. We got a thing like, wow, they did just read out of the Bible, proving precept upon precept that that's God's voice in the thunder. And then comes the rain and the heavy rain and it comes from correction. For his land. For his land. For it comes mercy. from mercy. Mm. We got to give them. Let me, let me watch that video again. <laughs> I'm going to pause it as I watch it the second time and write down and, and highlight these right. scriptures and write it down and meditate. I'm going to show somebody. So, right. Show my wife. Show my son. Somebody. Yep. I'm going to take the more earnest heed to these things. Read on. Lest any, at any time we should let them slip. You let it slip. You're like, them Negroes is crazy. That's Mother Nature. That Bible ain't real. That's written by the white man. Oh, this, that, and the other King James was white and he's a homo. You let them slip, letting other people get into your mind when you you know when you hear the truth. Mm. You you got enough common sense to put one and one together, like the stuff they're reading out the Bible is the same stuff that just happened in history right here. It just happened a few days ago. That makes perfect sense. But you let somebody take it from you. So the stuff that we hear here, we got to give more earnest heed to, which means what? Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh huh. Examine yourself. That means that you got to examine yourself. Read on. Whether ye be in the faith. So now I got to examine myself. Am I living according to thus saith the Lord? So when the storms do come by and God visits us once again, mm -hmm. am I on the right side of God that I may be protected, that I may have peace? that he may do me well. That's for you to examine yourself. Only you can do that. We don't know what you living on the other side of that uh, computer screen. That's right. This is for you to examine yourself. We have been the prophets of God from Israel united in Christ. We got class three times a day, seven days a week, where you can get more and more edification. We got schools all over the country. All over you, the world. All over the world. You just go on IsraelUnite.org and you look and get with a camp and be ready to change your life so that you can get with other believers that may be affected by the storms of God, but you'll have somewhere to dwell safely. That's right.
And with that, on the sides of the times, we say shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.